Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion video, and this time I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions on what the biggest design mistake, the biggest design flaw of the Link mechanic is, and honestly, in my opinion, if this design flaw was omitted from the Link mechanic when Konami gave us the mechanic a little bit, you know, around a year and a half ago at this point, the Link mechanic would be a much more fun mechanic to play and experiment with, it would be a much more balanced mechanic to play with, it would be a mechanic that would probably go down in history as the best mechanic Konami has ever introduced into the game, rather than what it currently is living in, which is sort of a state of infamy, like everyone pretty much loves to hate how the Link mechanic has pretty much broken traditional Yu-Gi-Oh beyond repair, and that's strictly because of what Basically, this design flaw I'm going to address does for the mechanic. Now, what you may be thinking is that I'm going to be spending this entire time just sitting here talking about the extra link mechanic that is part of the link summoning mechanic, when actually that is not the case. While extra linking, or U-boarding as some people like to refer to it as, is a big problem, and it should never be allowed in any sort of game where you're capable of just playing your deck so well that your opponent is not allowed to play, that should never be a core function of a core gameplay mechanic. While it is a problem, it is not the problem. And I believe the problem is going to be what I'm going to be addressing in this video. But so, before I get into the meat of it, I'd like to ask that you guys subscribe if you're new here and are new to my channel and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content whether it's discussion videos or whatever I decide to post in the future. As well as those of you that are here, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below after the video is over to decide whether or not you agree with me or whether you think I'm just some dumbass on the internet with a microphone and a camera, which, spoiler alert, I am. So, anyway, what I believe the biggest design flaw of the Link mechanic to be from a design aspect is the ability for you to Link Climb. Now, for those of you who are, you know, unversed in Yu-Gi-Oh! terminology, what is link climbing? It's an unofficial term, you will never find it in a rulebook, but it is very much something that plays a huge part in link summoning. And link climbing is your ability to use a link 2 or link 3 monster as its link rating for the number of materials for a subsequent link summon. So what I mean by that in more layman's terms, is if you have a Link 2 monster on the field, and you're trying to summon a Link 3, you can treat that Link 2 monster as two materials towards the Link summon of that Link 3 monster. Most common metagame example at this point in time would be in the Goki deck, or the Dark Warrior deck, is sold Tale of Two Noble Knights being a Link 2 monster, combining with one Warrior monster to summon Summon Sorceress, a Link 3 monster with only two monsters invested into the play, because Isold can be treated as two monsters towards the Link Summon of Summon Sorceress because it is a Link 2, thus it can be treated as that Link rating as materials. So, basically what this Link Climbing mechanic allows you to do is open up a lot of doors into subsequent Link Summoning, and I can understand why Konami would have wanted to implement this into the mechanic. It, on design point, on paper, it looks like it makes the mechanic easier for players to get accustomed to, which it does. Painfully so. It basically, very, very rapidly, breaks the mechanic wide open, and extra linking would be much harder, if not impossible, to do without it. Firewall Dragon and Gumblar Dragon, two heavily abused cards in the current metagame, would be basically really hard to play in an economical fashion with the link climbing removed from uh, the game mechanic. And basically, overall, things would be a lot better in terms of how Konami can design link monsters going forward as well as like what the current state of the game is, because being able to step up into multiple Link Monsters without losing resources of the monsters you invested into that Link Monster is a big problem. Let's take into account a simple one-card play of Armageddon Knight with Link Climbing enabled. You can go Armageddon Knight, send Destiny Hero Malicious to your graveyard, banish Malicious, summon another one from your deck, make Malicious and Armageddon Knight into Isold, Tale of Two Noble Knights. That Isold will then special summon another warrior from your deck by milling equip spells from your deck to your graveyard. You then use that Isold as two materials and that warrior monster you summoned to go into Summon Sorceress. 
So you've basically gone into a link 3 with just the Armageddon Knight at this point, but you're not done there because you still have a Malicious left over. So you banish the Malicious, summon the last Malicious from your deck in a zone that Summon Sorceress points to. Then using Summon Sorceress's effect, you're able to target Malicious and summon another Warrior from your deck. And then if you so choose to, you are capable of using Summon Sorceress as a link 3 as 3 materials and that one Malicious that you have left over on your field into a Firewall Dragon, a super powerful Link 4, and that is not okay for the game. It's not okay at all. You lost zero resources going into that, and in the process, you accessed two extenders along the way, at bare minimum, because whatever monsters you summoned off Isold or Summon Sorceress could have been extenders in their own right, like Goki monsters that search cards, or another Armageddon Knight, which could dump another dark monster to be another extender, like Destrudo or Blackwing Zephyros, or something like that. The advantage and the economy you get out of these plays because of Link Climbing existing only piles up. It only stacks up. Now, let's look at the exact same example if we remove Link Climbing from the equation. You normal summon that same Armageddon Knight, send Malicious to Grave, banish Malicious, summon Malicious, make Isold. Isold summons a warrior from your deck. But now, you cannot use Isold and that warrior to make Summon Sorceress. You need another monster because Isold would only be one warrior and you have two monsters on field and you need three for Summon Sorceress. So you'd have to use that last Malicious, summon the last Malicious from your deck. Then you're able to make Summon Sorceress. But now what? From here, you would need another extender, either in your hand or whether it was in your graveyard off of a play off Armageddon Knight or something. That part is irrelevant. You would require more cards just to make the Summon Sorceress live. And then from there, you wouldn't be able to go straight into Firewall Dragon with Summon Sorceress and one monster. You would have to invest four monsters into Firewall Dragon, one of which would probably be Summon Sorceress, depending on how your play was structured, which means that you straight up just lost the three monster investment that you put into that Summon Sorceress because it's only being treated as one monster. Let's look at Firewall Dragon and think, just for a moment, how much more fair of a card it would be if instead of reading two plus monsters, if you just required four monsters to summon it every single time you wanted to summon it. A lot of the firewall loops would not be uh, you know, existent because a lot of the firewall loops were you just reviving a Link 3 with something like Darkness Metal Dragon or like Grand Soil or whatever and then making another firewall when firewall was at multiples. You wouldn't be able to easily access it off stepping up through Link plays like we've already established. Basically, the card would be a lot more fair. It would be a lot harder for you to establish a lot of these resources onto the field and commit as minimal investment from your hand and deck as possible into making these plays, and it would make extra linking a lot harder, and it would make it a lot harder for you to use Firewall Dragon's effect for bouncing resources. It would make it a lot more vital as well. Um, like, basically, it would just be really, really, like beneficial to the game because you would not be able to just step up through these common extender link monsters that we're getting in the form of Isold, Crystron Needle Fiber, Heavy Metal Foes Electromite, Summon Sorceress. These are all just generic extenders that move around your card resources, but in the process you lose no resources that you invest into the play. Link climbing is what allows this to be the case, and we can look at how something like Link Climbing can fail and break the game even before Link Summoning ever came to Yu-Gi-Oh! If you look at Zodiacs, that was essentially almost identical to Link Climbing, and it broke the Xyz mechanic. You had a one-card investment of Summon a Zoo Monster, you get to slap Broad Bull on top of it. Broad Bull gives you another card, but you lost nothing going into that Broad Bull because then you can just slap a Chalkanine on top of it. Chalkanine can detach and summon the monster you originally summoned and put Broad Bull on. So now you've gotten that card back too. And then you can slap Tiger Mortar on top and do something with it like reclaiming a monster from your graveyard to get its attack boost under the Zodiac monster that you're summoning with your Xyz stack. And then you finally end it all off with summoning a Dryden on top of your Xyz stack of monsters, and that Dryden gets to deal with one of your opponent's cards. So your investment has completely paid for itself, and you've lost zero resources doing it. It's very, very easy to see how this doesn't work and isn't sustainable for the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's very easy. Anyone with half a brain could figure it out, right? There's a reason the Zodiac, despite being very underwhelming in terms of what it did 
to the game. All of its interactions were incredibly fair, like one-for-one -one interactions on paper. When you looked at them all individually, when you put them all together, suddenly it all sort of just, you know, span out of control of just being good one-card plays that gained you tons of advantage because the mechanic was inherently broken. And that's the entirety of the link climbing mechanic. Link climbing is literally Zodiac as the link mechanic, as a core game mechanic. And so, really, it's very, very easy for you to look at it and be like, this is kind of a problem, right? Because if link climbing was going to be something that was implemented into the game from day one, Konami should have looked at it and been, all right, we can't put any link monsters that function as extenders into the game or else these are going to be abused with link climbing. It's something that's very, very much a problem that even Konami themselves seem to be acknowledging because if you look at some of the new Link Vrains 2 pack monsters that are coming out in Japan, specifically like the Gadget one and then one other one, I can't remember which one specifically it is, it has text on it that says this card cannot be used for a Link Summon because it's a generic Link 2 that serves as an extender for the gadget one serves for as a generic machine extender essentially and if they had not put that restriction on the card then you would end up with this just being the next best extender to step up into something like summon sorceress and then go further beyond up into firewall dragon because the entirety of the link format we're currently in is based around firewall dragon if you're playing a combo based deck you need to assess your deck's ability to make Firewall Dragon, and that's pretty sad when we're looking at every single card that we have out right now in terms of a combo card, combo archetype, combo deck, and we're looking at all of the future releases that are coming out, and the only thing on our minds is how well does this summon Firewall Dragon? How does this interact with Firewall Dragon? Because of how easy it is for you to access Firewall Dragon because of Link Climbing, that is the basic, you know, problem that the link climbing mechanic presents. It's just, it's just really easy. It's really easy to just say that the game would be so much easier and so much better without the link climbing mechanic there. And link summoning was always going to be destined to be a good mechanic whether or not it had link climbing in it. It's generic synchro summoning. You can't make that bad. And then you one-upped that by making it man like mandatory because you have the extra monster zone. So you can only summon one monster from the extra deck if you're not playing Link Monsters. So you have to unlock zones with Link Arrows. You made it a generic mechanic, the most generic mechanic we've ever seen. And then you made it necessary. So it was never going to be bad. And then you have these extenders like Isold and Needle Fiber and Electromite that move your cards around and gain resources in certain areas, which on their own is fine if there was no Link Climbing. But because there is link climbing and you're not losing the resources you're putting into those cards that are moving your resources around, suddenly we end up with a huge problem. Suddenly we reach critical mass. I mean, think about if this had been the case with synchro summoning. Imagine if synchro monsters were always treated as the number of monsters that you used to make them. Let's say you had three monsters on the field, a level 2 tuner, a level 3 tuner, and a level 4 tuner. You can't make Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, with those because you have two tuners. But what if you made the level 3 tuner and the level 4 non-tuner into Ancient Fairy Dragon? That's a level 7 synchro. What if it was treated as two monsters, like Link 2s are? And then you suddenly are able to step Ancient Fairy Dragon and the tuner up into Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Can you not see how that would also be very bad for the game? It's the exact same thing with the Link mechanic. The Link mechanic breaks the concept of card economy out in the it breaks it wide open because card investments no longer matter when you're using them for link summons as long as you are planning on using that link summon for a subsequent link summon of the same value as the monsters that you put into it so it's it's really really problematic and i feel like the game would be better without it because then it would be really hard to extra link again look at firewall dragon if you had to use four monsters to make firewall dragon every single time the card would be insanely more fair than it is currently and it would be a lot harder to literally deck build every combo deck around firewall dragon like we are currently doing but basically tldr link climbing is the ultimate problem if you look at it from a cause and effect mentality if you remove link climbing 
Think about how much harder it would be to extra link and how many extra cards it would take to extra link. You would have to start dedicating your entire hand just to extra linking, where currently we extra link off literally consistent one and two card combos. Armageddon Knight is a one card FTK because of link climbing, and that's just not okay. It's not okay in any way, shape, or form. And then you start factoring in the fact that you know, you could use Link Monsters as removal with Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Service and Nightmare Unicorn, but you're not losing those monsters that you put into that removal. You get to put two monsters on your field into Nightmare Phoenix, pop a back row, and then immediately treat it as two materials to go back into your combo play. That's not okay. <laughs> but anyway, I want to know what your thoughts and opinions are in the comments down below. As per usual, give me a hashtag link climbing in the comments down below if you made it this far. And as always, guys, Thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! content like this or whatever I put out in the future. If you liked what you saw, I'd really appreciate you subscribing and joining the channel and all that sort of stuff. But if you want to catch my live streams or join my channel's Discord server, links to those are in the description down below in this video as well. I'd love to see you and chat with you on some live streams or chat with you in my Discord. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as always. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.